Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Aiden, from Cartoon Apocalypse, and today, I like, pretty much, the season finale of Star vs. the Forces of Evil Season 3 came out, and oh man, guys, there's so much to talk about. Honestly, there was more questions raised than answers answered, and geez, let's just get right into it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it now. Now, usually, on a typical analysis, I would go through the episode and be like, hey, this or that, but I lit like this is an hour long special. It's like two 20 minute episodes. So I, I and I'm putting it into one video. So there's not going to be enough time for me to go through every single part. So I literally made a bullet point list of what I thought we should talk about. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys, right? Divide felt like a filler compared to Conquer. Conquer just had I had double the amount of bullet points on Conquer than I did Divide. They both were like plot filled episodes. But compared to Conquer, Divide just felt like a complete filler because not as much happened in it. Now guys, I know they both had a lot of stuff that happened. I was just saying that it's kind of funny that Conquer had so many more things to talk about than Divide did. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was how that Star does not trust Eclipsa when, like, in the very first scene of Divide. She's asking Eclipsa questions and she doesn't trust her because of what she did to Moon, or at least she didn't allow Moon to, like, defeat Meteora. So she's like, no, if she's just gonna keep on interfering like this, we can't have her running about. So they just, like, lock her up in her little castle area. Another thing that I thought was important to mention is that Star just does not like being called the Queen at this point in time. She says acting queen is what people should call her because her mom's still out there and she's not ready to become queen yet because she just doesn't have the experience yet. Now personally, us as viewers, we see that she has grown a lot and matured a lot, especially since season one, and I will probably be making a video just on how she has progressed throughout time. And everyone is looking to star to just like be the queen like nothing happened to moon like obviously something did happen to moon but they are just like oh well another queen's down let's just move online it was like wait you guys aren't even gonna like throw a funeral or do this or that it's just like oh queen moon's down let's just bring up queen star not much that we could do it's just like they didn't do like they didn't try anything it was just kind of weird maybe that's how royal stuff is i mean that's not how the united states is so i wouldn't know but <laughs> all right another small little thing that might not mean anything that i wanted to mention was that the raven that landed on memfred's arm his little collar badge thing it really reminded me of bill's eye from gravity falls because just look at it i mean it has like the the squarish eye not squarish like diamond eye kind of with the little like eyelashes now you could just be like oh well that's just an eye it just reminded me of bill uh probably nothing but just something to put in there because we do know that they like to put in gravity falls references in this show and then we do see that Star orders the Magic High Commission to leave in the conference room. Which I'm honestly happy about because, hey, the Magic High Commission was liars. And that's the exact same reason why Star kicked them out. is because they were liars. And she, like, I'm glad that she did that because you can't have liars still in there. They should have they been locked up. But obviously they can't because Omnitrex is prime, does stuff with the universe or something. I don't, I don't exactly know. But I, mean, I think Hecapu, well, Hecapu makes dimensional scissors, just stuff like that. So they can't really lock them up because they're needed. It's just they can't be like up as the royal family is i would think right and then another thing that i found very interesting is that mina is like good now or something because they actually sent mina out or at least the like one of the royal knights did and she failed obviously but like she didn't like she's good now because she seemed to be against star and everyone during the monster bash and why is she good now all of a sudden i'm not exactly too sure that's like questions that we just might not ever have the answer to, or maybe we will, I'm not sure, but I guess Mena's good now, or something, I, I don't know. And another thing I just thought I'd mention, when Star and Marco were in Star's room, Star and Marco are talking, and it's just like, Star's like, we're gonna have to divide and conquer, and I think that's where the episode names came from. Because I do think that Dear and Nisty had a hard time choosing names for these episodes. Because what are you supposed to call the Season 3 finale? Oh, Season 3 finale? No, Divide and Conquer was a good name for it. But I feel like they just had a hard time naming it, so that's what they came up with, is Divide and Conquer from that one line. I could be totally wrong, but uh, that's just a prediction that I have. I, I have no evidence to support it, it's just something I thought. 
And I also wanted to say that they did have a very good friend bonding moment. Now you will notice a repetition to friend bonding moments in this list, but they did have a friend bonding moment when Star and Marco were just started hugging, and honestly I think it's been a little while since we've seen a Starco hug, actually not like Starco hug, just Star and Marco hugging. I can't exactly remember the last time we had it, it couldn't have been that long ago, could it have? I'm not sure. But Star and Marco just being like flat out honest, and it seems like they're doing just fine after the Starco kiss that happened in Booth Buddies. It's like they just have a mutual understanding. I know in a couple of videos ago I said, hey, they're either going to talk about it or they just have a mutual understanding of, hey, let's just not bring it up because we have other matters to attend to. And it seems like the mutual understanding is what they went with, unless if they just had a talk off screen because we can't see their entire lives, right? Like, they could have talked about it, or they could have not. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll see a flashback. Not entirely too sure, though. Now, I just had a... Like, throughout this entire episode, I, like, at least after when Star went into the magic dimension, I was like, stay in your butterfly form. You could fly around way easier. And it's just like, why didn't she stay in her butterfly form? I mean, yeah, I'm sure it, like, kind of wears down on your energy or something. But you... Like, I just don't know why she didn't stay in her butterfly form. She could have been way more efficient with her searches in that form. She could have been way faster. It, this wouldn't have taken so long if she had stayed in her butterfly form. Like, why did she get out of it as soon as she went in there? It's just something that I didn't understand why she did it. Uh, seriously, why didn't you stay in your butterfly form? I don't know, just something I had a rant to rant about. I don't know, it's just something I wanted to point out there. Skipping ahead quite a bit actually again I'm not trying to point out like what happened in the plot because you guys can see what happened because you guys have eyes I'm just saying things that I felt like needed to be addressed or something like that So Tom and Marco actually had a friend bonding moment in this little scene because Tom was like, you know Marco I've treated you fairly badly and listed out all the things and it's just cool to see Tom being like Hey, I apologize for what I did and it's really nice to have you as a friend and he did say the monster arm. Now, we didn't see Tom at all in that episode, so it's like, has Tom been spying on them? Because it seems like he has been spying on them for quite some time when he was, like, a little bit less mature. And I'll bring up the maturity here in a little bit. But seriously, Tom, why did you spy on them so much? If you knew about the monster arm, he, he was like, did I cause that? No. And Mark was like, no, you didn't cause it. That was Star. But did he cause it, though? Did he influence Star? Probably not, that's just a crazy accusation I just made. But it's funny to see that Tom has actually been spying on them this entire time. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh jeez Tom, why did you do that? And then we go back to Star, and this is one of the most interesting things, in my opinion, in this entire episode. And it it's very subtle, you guys might not have noticed it, or maybe you guys did, you, you probably did, it was the dark magic. Or at least dark purple magic that we see flowing in a stream in the magic dimension that Star follows to find Moon. If we cut forward a little bit to when Star actually finds Moon, look at Moon's hands. We see that she doesn't have the magic veins. Obviously her eye gets cured because we see that from the magic, so the magic has some sort of healing ability just like the magic sanctuary does and that's how the same, that's, that's the exact same thing that happened here. And I'll bring up the magic sanctuary here in a little bit. But just notice Moon's arms. She doesn't have the black veins anymore. Now this could be an animation error, but I like 100% doubt it because an animation error like that did happen in Stump Day, but I don't think it happened in this episode because we do see the purple dark magic flowing throughout the magic dimension as if it washed out and Moon's body is just cleansed of all bad things now. I would think, right? And then if we go back a little bit, we can actually see a unicorn that's dark purple. I could always look back and deep dive and see if there was a purple unicorn like that. But this unicorn was drinking the dark magic. So could this unicorn become evil or become like dark or something? I don't know. It was just something I wanted to bring up because why? I, I don't know. Why not, right? They could have just added this in there because, hey, why not, right? But, you know, I think it was important to mention that. So I just wanted to mention as well, Meteora is super strong, cutting back to when we see Marco and the Magnificent Seven fighting Meteora. She has gotten super strong compared to everyone else. And speaking of being strong, the magic, like, forgetness thing that happens when you're in the magic dimension is really strong as well because we see Star, she set so many reminders and things too, 
but it's just like it's not enough because star just kept on going back to that same forgetness state and it's like wait what how is this happening we don't know again this episode raised so many more questions than answers and i mean we did have the same question from deep dive but it's just something that i wanted to mention as well of it being like how is it so strong i mean they're literally in the source of magic so i guess that's something to say uh, i don't know we don't really know because I didn't create the show. I don't know what's going on yet. We don't have as many answers yet. This might be something that never becomes answered either. So that's all I had down for the divide. And now you guys might be thinking, wow, that was a lot of things. That was like 10 minutes worth of stuff. And my counter is, well, you'll have to wait to see with the conquer things because there is a lot more in conquer. Oh boy, let's get into it. All right, so Conquer, like I said at the beginning of this video, is way more interesting, you could say the least, or at least plot-driven than Divide was. Now, Divide was extremely plot-driven, and that just tells you how much Conquer was. If I'm saying that Divide was like a filler to Conquer, that shows that there's a big gap between the plot and this thing. Now, again, that's just my own opinion, but it, I don't know. I think there was a lot more things to mention in Conquer than there was Divide. Now the first thing that I had mentioned down is the different world in the magic dimension because we see Moon swim up one and comes to this one like rocky like red rock world which is super interesting and it's like wait what is this and I want to know more about how this works because are these like things wormholes because the streams don't seem to go up that high and even if they do how do they go to different worlds as well because we do see later that they go up to the magic sanctuary as well as this little like pot or sewer thing which i thought was extremely interesting because i don't know where that is maybe we've seen it before i'm not exactly too sure but notice the hands right those hands that moon leaves behind i guarantee you 100 percent we will see those again in season four because there was just music playing in the background and they stayed on that shot way too long. And it was just like, oh my gosh, we're gonna see this again. And that will probably help play a part in Finding Moon or at least not help play a part. But I think we will see that again in season four. Now I say that it's a 100% fact, but it's not. I just think it is confirmed that it'll reappear. It could not, but I think it will. And as well as the Magic Sanctuary, if you guys remember, Glossark actually came out of the Magic Sanctuary. So this means that Glossark went to the Magic Dimension when he was burned, burned in quotation marks, and so he just came back up through the Magic Dimension. And now he's back, or at least, uh, you know, I'll get to it in a minute. Now I kind of skipped ahead a little bit, but when the, like, Magnificent Five it is now, or like, that we see in this clip, Tom is very mature now, and I'm actually starting to like Tom more than I used to because Tom is just becoming a better person in general. His character development has come around all well circled because he used to be this crazy maniac guy until now he's this like well-rounded person. And I think it's amazing to see Tom so mature now. And he was just giving a speech on how, hey, we don't follow Marco's plans because they're good. We follow them because he's Marco. He was appointed by the acting queen. And yeah, so let's follow his plans. And then cutting back to the magic dimension, we actually see the firstborn, or that star made, to like reform the magic dimension, which I thought was interesting to see too. I mean, I had expected to see it, so it wasn't too surprising. But they, like, Star and Moon run away from it. And then we cut back to it later, where, like, the firstborn saying, hey, you don't belong here. And, like, she blasts Moon, or I'm assuming that the firstborn is a she, and I don't know her gender or their gender. But they blast Moon away, and then she, the, un the firstborn, says that you don't belong here either. So then they blast Star away as well. Now... I don't know, like, I'm assuming that since it's the firstborn, this firstborn was able to, like, control magic because, like, I think they created the magic dimension because they brought it back to life pretty much. Well, not created it, but at least, like, made it their own, kind of, because they were, like, the sprout of new magic forming. I'm not exactly too sure. I'm just kind of spitballing here. But I think that's why they were able to control magic or just because they're a magic being. And I think that anyone can use magic. You just have to have 
the magic ability to do it. I I'm not exactly too sure either about that. Hopefully we'll learn more about the magic book of spells, or about it when the magic books of spells comes out. So cutting back a little bit, we see Tom, like, just throw Meteora into the underworld. And she survives, apparently, because she comes back out. And, like, how did she survive that? Not exactly too sure. She's super powerful, like I said earlier. But I, I really don't know how she survived. And then Tad is back. He's just annoying a little bit. And it's just like, oh, jeez. Like, come on, man. Tad again. Ugh. Alright, whatever. But I think he's officially moving out now because he said that he was getting the last of his things. But I doubt it. I don't think that's true. But it could be. I'm not too sure. And then he's like, I wrote a love poem for you. And then Kelly gets blasted from Meteora. So there's that. And then we have another friend of bonding moment from Tom and Marco. Jeez, there's a lot of these in this episode, right? And Tom says, you're my best friend. And it's like, Marco just doesn't respond to it in the way that most people would think because like Marco is Star's best friend and I think Star is Marco's best friend as well and it's just like how does Tom fit in there I mean uh, according to Star you could have like two best friends on Muni and on Earth and things like that but uh, I don't know maybe but I don't know that's just nice of Tom to be like hey man you're my best friend I'm not leaving you and then Marco says that he kissed Star, so he confesses to Tom, or no, that that was wrong. He says to Tom that he had kissed Star, and so Tom just runs off to, like, apparently to go save Star, because that's what they w that's what Marco had wanted him to do in the first place. So then he, like, surrenders himself to Meteora, and then Tom just goes in and starts, he's like, I'm calling your bluff, Marco, while he, like, blocks meteor's eye beams and we do know that tom has thousands of souls especially from the demon episode where he removes a soul but this seems like a way better way to remove his souls because it's quick and easy and he just comes right back to life but yeah tom is like hey i'm calling your bluff and then marco's like no i actually did kiss star and he's like oh but he doesn't seem too bothered by it he is just like wait a minute what it's like he didn't like do anything about it it was weird and he just seemed to be okay with it, which is another play to role where I'm saying that he is more mature. And I'll bring up his maturity again in a little bit too, but he has gotten super mature. Like, it's just amazing. So Meteor just keeps on blasting him, and then we cut back to Star, and then saying that it was a dream, but it probably wasn't. But was it a dream? It could have been, but I doubt it. Just because there's a couple things in there that I think make it not a dream, and especially if the hands come back, or at least the hand marks come back, then that obviously wasn't a dream, so it actually did happen. Star was just teleported back to where her bed was, which kind of reminds me of Minecraft, don't hate on me for that. But like, where does that teleport Moon to? Where is Moon? Moon's probably not dead, we haven't seen her throughout the rest of the episode. So that begs the question on where she is. is. Are we just gonna end up finding her in her bed like we did with Star? Probably not. I don't know where Moon went, but that would be pretty cool. Or I mean, that wouldn't be like super cool. I, I like seriously. I'll bring up season four in a little bit, but like, is Moon just gonna be the main thing of season four to find Moon? Could be. I don't know. But then we cut to Star, Marco, and Tom, or at least Marco in his balloon form, going to the magic sanctuary, and Star's trying to open it up, but it doesn't work. She does the exact same thing that her mother did, but I don't think that she was supposed to do that, because that was Moon's thing. She needs to move away from trying to be like her mother and be more like herself. I think she could have opened it if she were to be herself, and I think that's the key to a lot of things, is to just be yourself and that's how you become a better queen. So the magic sanctuary does not open, or at least like rise. Maybe that's because, I think it's because that Star just was not being herself. And we see Star is just disappointed because nothing is going her way. It's not being right, everything just seems bad. It's like nothing is going to help and nothing's gonna be right. And so, like, Tom is just trying to be nice, and he's like, I promised Marco I would keep you safe, and he opens up a pathway to the underworld, and he's like, I'll you'll be safe in here, we'll be nice and warm in there, 
and stars just like like she doesn't know how to react and i think she was about to go until a balloon hit her and she's just like i'm queen i have to, to help my people and this is when she finally accepts herself as queen which i thought was amazing because it's like wow she has finally like realized that she needs to step up because there's no one else who can so I'm just gonna like skip past a couple parts and I'm just gonna go to the epic showdown that happened with Meteora and Star, which was pretty cool. She like learned that they were like their butterfly form really packed a punch, but believe it or not, like that's only halfway through my bullet point list. So let's keep on going, right? So there's the epic showdown and it's just Meteora has Star down and Meteora is like, hey, you know what? Your family messed up everything. And then Star's like, yes. And then Meteor is like, I want your power or something like that. So Star gives Meteor her power, which I thought was really weird because like we got this really weird animation scene where she just like unbutterfly forms and then just gives her power from her like heart in her stomach. I don't know exactly how it worked. It was kind of interesting to see and it was just like weird to see in just in general. And now Meteora is just like unstable, she's like running into walls and things. Either she has too much power or just the blast was just like, she, she just got hurt. So maybe she's just like, uh, maybe her eyes aren't working properly or something, I don't know. But she's just like, uh, where do I go? But she soon just gives back up. But then Star is just struggling and she's trying to do another blast with her wand. And she's just like so weak right now and she just doesn't have the strength to do it because she literally just gave a bunch of magic to Meteora. Now she might not have actually given the magic to Meteora. That could have just been a super omega blast. I'm not exactly too sure. But it surely did look like she was giving some magic to Meteora. I don't know. But something that we might learn the answer to in season 4. But, oh man guys, this is when it got super interesting. Eclipsa comes and takes the wand and transforms it into her own wand, which is an umbrella. And I thought it looked amazing. And a lot of people who like Eclipsa probably started screaming at this moment. <laughs> oh man, that was probably, I thought it was amazing how Eclipsa did that. And so she just starts blasting Meteora, being like, hey, we can't do this. And so we see a bunch of spells, or at least like three, I think, from Eclipsa that were super amazing and cool that we haven't seen anything about. And it just shows us how powerful Eclipsa is because she was just like throwing Meteora back, like, get back, get back. But like, let me tell you guys something here. Meteor was actually holding back. Meteor wasn't actually fighting Eclipsa. She didn't want to take Eclipsa's soul. Like, she didn't shoot her eye beams very often at Meteora. Like, she didn't shoot her eye beams once at Meteora, so it's like, she just didn't want to fight her mother, which I thought was interesting. So Eclipsa does this spell that encapsulates Meteora into this ball, and then it shatters, and then we're just left with, like, a bit of Meteora's, like, gown or dress or whatever it is. Attire, you could say. And then we see Star and Marco... And then they're just like, ha ha ha, hugging it out and stuff. And then Tom comes in, I'm like, I'm just gonna make this awkward. And it's like another big friend bonding moment, which we see a gosh dang lot of in this episode, which I love. I love the friend bonding moments. It's like, it gives you a warm feeling inside, you know? And it's just super cool to see that this nice friend bonding moment. And I thought it was amazing. And Tom does not seem to mind that Marco says he kissed star he just kind of like plays it off now we might see this in season four where he's like hey what happened because i'm assuming that season four will just pick up right where we left off it could not which i hope it doesn't because i want to see exactly right after this which we will have to wait a while for season four i might make a video on it but yeah tom just doesn't seem to be like too bothered by it and it's just like huh interesting and then it's just like they're they're all friends now or something so i don't exactly know how the shipping drama will go up if tom become is still star's boyfriend i like tom now more just specifically because of this episode he was getting kind of annoying and is another mystery like so am i better than marco now but i do think that he matured a little bit so he might just be like hey you know what star i'm like breaking up with you just because you deserve marco or maybe they'll stay together, which I, I won't hate it as much as I would have before. I still ship Starco. It's just like, hey, Tom, you're, 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 you're better now. So I'll accept it for a little bit. Or at least more than I do. I still want Starco to happen, though. 
So then Meteora is just like looking sad and then she's like, well, thanks for letting me borrow this. But then Star's like, no, you keep it, which was a great move by Star because that just shows that she really does care about Meteora and her family history because she did not take it very lightly when she found out that she wasn't even related to the original Butterfly family. She just like ran out and it was just not okay. And speaking of the wand, where was the wand throughout this entire episode? We saw it a little bit when they were at the Magic Sanctuary area, but that was pretty much it and then we saw it at the last scene but the wand was nowhere to be seen she didn't like use it at all in this episode so like she should have just given it to Marco to fight Meteora because he can use the wand probably not very well but I was just hoping like when I watched I was like give Marco the wand because I think that would be super cool to see some more Marco wand action but then we hear Meteor crying, and we do learn that Meteor was transformed back into a baby. And not only that, Eclipse is like, thank you, Star. And then she flies away with her umbrella with Meteor. And I was just like, oh my gosh, they're starting a new royal family. They're going to, she's going to make everything right. And then guess what? Glossark shows up with his Globgore stuff. But then guess what? He's like, uh, no, I'm talking about Globgore, Eclipse's monster husband. I was trying to tell you this all along. So Glossark is back, but I don't think he was ever really gone. I think he was just like acting in this way of being like, hey, yeah, Globgore. And I think the reason of that is because of Eclipse, because he only started acting like that once he came back and Eclipse was back and broken out of her area. And we do know that Glossark was acting like that with Eclipsa because Eclipsa scratched his gem and it's like it was nothing wrong. So I think that the reason why Glossark was acting like that is because of Eclipsa. And I will do more research on it, but I do believe that Glossark's main goal was to get Eclipsa the wand back to start the royal family back up again. Also, Glossark's voice is different, and Star mentions this as well. Now, the reason why I think this is is because he's been acting in this way for so long that he never said anything other than Globgor that we know of, at least. So, I just am thinking that, hey, yeah, Glossark is back, and he sounds different, which I liked his old voice better, but I think he sounds different just because, and I think they did that on purpose as well, but I think they did that because it's like, he hasn't talked for months, and it's just like, hey, he's back now, so, different voice, right? Except, I just said Glossark goes back, but then he leaves to go be with Eclipsa, which makes sense. He's gonna go continue to train Eclipsa, get her better, get her so that she can use magic without her wand, because we know Eclipsa cannot do magic without her wand, and so he's just going back, and then he, he is going along with Eclipsa to start the Butterfly family back up again, or at least the true Butterfly family. So he flies off, probably to be with Eclipsa, and then we cut to Eclipsa, and they go back to the monster temple that the monster bash was held at. And then Eclipsa's just looking around for her monster husband, and then she opens up a room, and we see her monster husband frozen in crystal. And that's literally where the episode just leaves off of, and then it's like Eclipsa says, Oh, I'm back, my dear. And then that's where the episode leaves off at. And honestly, guys, I think this episode could have been just fine like if this was the end of the show i would be pretty satisfied like i know that there was a lot of questions raised but like there's a lot of questions raised in every show like gravity falls there was tons of questions that were unanswered as well but i think if the last if the very last scene was there if if we had just seen eclipse of ride off into the sunset then i think that we would have been pretty satisfied with the end of the show I wouldn't have liked the end of the show being the end of the show because I definitely want to see a season 4 because I love this show, but it's like, I was pretty satisfied with how this episode ended. I think the fight didn't just end at a, an abrupt thing, they had a lot of fighting with Meteor, unlike Toffee, that was just like, hey yeah, he's alive and now he's dead. No, he, Meteor took a lot of beating and Meteor is actually back now. So I think that they are going to raise Meteor up and start their own butterfly kingdom again. And the true family butterfly is back. And it's just like, oh man, that was a good episode. So before I end off this video, I just wanted to say a few last words that we didn't really get answered. These are more questions than words. But I just, like, I'll probably make video on it, like, separate videos on it here soon anyway. 
where was Rastacor in this entire episode? Because we do know in Schooled we see Meteora taking Rastacor and just as his arm. But I was thinking like, hey, you know what, Meteora probably just had him in a pocket or something, but we didn't see him at all. Where is he? Like, what, did he escape or something? I'm not exactly too sure where he's at. Season 4. There are literally no more villains. Mina, I don't think, is a villain anymore. There's not Eclipsa, Meteora, like, the only other villains that are left is Toffee and Ludo. But where are they? It's like, what? The, uh, I, how is Season 4 gonna go? They're gonna have, like, they're gonna have to create a new villain or bring Toffee back because Season 4 is going to have no arc at all. Sure, I think the first couple episodes will be them looking for Moon, but seriously, I don't know where they are. It's like, what the heck? Where? Like, how is season four gonna go? I'm not exactly too sure. Another question I wanted to bring up, like, does Star have magic anymore? Because we did see that she, like, seemed to give her magic to Meteora. So, is her magic gone? Is she going to still be able to use magic? Because that would be a pretty, like, yeah, sure, the show would be pretty cool still, but it's like, Magic is a huge plot arc to this show, and if they were to just remove Star's ability to do magic, I just don't think it would do as well. So I definitely think that the magic will still be with Star, it's just she's weaker and she has to like regain her magic strength, maybe. I'm not exactly too sure, there's a lot of questions in this episode that I cannot answer. Is Tom and Star going to break up? Now this is something that I definitely kind of want to see, because I, I do ship Starco, but if Star and Tom don't, we do see Star and Tom and Marco and Ponyhead in the season 4 poster, but they could still be, like, together in season 4, which honestly, like, I hope Tom just breaks up with Star again, but it could not be, I'm not too sure, but maybe it is, not too sure, but that would be pretty cool if they broke up. And what is the deal with the magic dimension? Like, how does the portal thing work? Is it just wormholes? Or does it, like, literally separate up into the new, like, worlds or something? Not exactly too sure. I was like, hey, you know what? What if the magic dimension is at the center of Muni? Because we don't see too much of Muni. And if the magic dimension was just in, the like, the core of Muni, and it just sprouted up, I think it would be pretty cool. Which it totally could be. But, like, does that mean that every single place that we saw them go through through that was in there it totally could be the core of muni which i thought would be pretty cool but then where's the underworld fit into that and it's just kind of confusing like how does that work so i definitely want to know how that all works but anyway guys that's gonna wrap up this long long video oh jesus is gonna take forever to edit and that's my fault for putting it all into one video but that's okay because it was for you guys and for me to talk about it so i hope you guys did enjoy this video thanks for 8,000 subscribers that's amazing guys and also thanks to aria plus for this amazing piece of fan art if you guys would like to send in your fan art you could tweet at us at twitter or you could tag us on Instagram, and we will include all your fan art at the end of our videos, which I just love this piece of fan art. It's amazing. So if you guys want to send in your fan art that you have, then you can go ahead and send that in to us. That'd be greatly appreciated, and I'll hang it up on my wall or something. I don't know. But yeah, well, I'll talk to you guys later. And yeah, have a good day. This was an amazing day, for me at least, because we got to see the Season 3 finale, and now we get to wait for Season 4. So, alright, I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. I guess it's time for that group photo. <laughs>